First of all, what was the single lesson you've learned from the Lehman debacle? Well, Tom, by the way, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And you are very well informed, by the way, on my tennis game. Um, I think the first lesson was uh, not all crises are predictable. And it was very well said before. Uh, uh, the world got a little bit caught uh, uh, by surprise, even though some signals were already there. I think the second dimension we all learned was uh, I don't think we had collectively totally assessed uh, the interconnectivity mm -hmm. uh, between the various uh, you know, entities and countries, uh, and the world was already very interconnected. Uh, uh, otherwise, uh, I believe that the world today is so different from 10 years ago. It was already said, um, you know, the banking industry right. specifically is better capitalized, is more liquid. Uh, the, stress, the stress testing being implemented here in the United States, now in Europe, I think have uh, <clears throat> provided a, a, a lot of uh, uh, improvements, as well as all the work that has been done around living well, uh, resolution planning. I'm not right. saying this is riskless, I'm just saying it's, uh, it's, it's a very different governance at work. To uh, set this hour today. up for our American audience, I want to make clear, BNP Paribas is the dominant bank of France and with a huge European platform, a retail platform, but also an expansive and early vision to Asia as well. And the message this week, Sean Eve, has been that Lehman was opportunistic and trying to get out front and to do, do, do. Your bank is the polar opposite. Are, do you worry now that in other banks we're seeing too much opportunistic tone that could get them into trouble? You know, Tom, uh, it's an excellent point. At the end of the day, it's not only about size, it's not only about business model, it's really about risk management, risk appetite, and uh, risk identification, which I think the banking industry as a whole has made a significant progress. Uh, to your point, as it relates to BNP Paribas, what has worked well over the many years is uh, uh, diversification. Diversification in terms of geographical diversification, Europe, a European leader, Americas, we are deeply involved here, and Asia, but diversification as well in terms of uh, product mix and in terms of activity. If, if I uh, uh, go to our platform here in the United States, um, it's a diversified platform, as you just said. You know, we have retail, we have wholesale. Retail mm -hmm. is Bank of the West. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have two and a half million clients. Right. We, we, we do lending, uh, consumer finance. Wholesale, it based in New York, is uh, serving corporates uh, uh, domestically, internationally. Mm -hmm. 16,000 people and 6 billion of you revenues. You have 16,000 people? 16,000 people in the United States. In the, I did not right. know that. In the United States. Well, Francine? Yeah, Jean-Yves Fillon, talk to me a little bit about whether the French bank differently to the Americans. And so do you need to speak to your customer differently? Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, 16,000 people in the United States, uh, uh, 6 billion of revenues. This is the largest balance sheet allocation uh, uh, for the bank uh, after France. Then uh, in terms of speaking to clients here, we, we feel very part of the fabric of the US. Having said that, uh, uh, all, I think one of our differentiating factors here is we can serve clients domestically uh, um, probably as well as any other banks in the product suite we have, but when it's time to cover them outside of the United States, let's say do capital raising, acquisition financing for large US, co large US corporates in the urban market where we lead, this is where uh, we uh, probably can uh, add even more contribution to the client base here. But to your point, Francine, uh, and based in London, I'm sure you see that. Uh, conversely, uh, we've been very active in taking US, uh, European clients into the deep US market, uh, leveraging our uh, large distribution capabilities, particularly debt distribution capabilities in the United States. And having an ability to raise you know, US dollar capital here and, and Euro, uh, 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 in, in, on the other side of the Atlantic has, has worked pretty well uh, while the transatlantic uh, flow and dynamic has been quite active over the last few years. But how will finance change over the next 10 years? Ten, is it five to 10 years, Jean-Yves? Is it digitalization? Is it the way we work or is it the way that banks actually lend to each other? You mean, oh, uh, you mean looking forward? Oh, exactly. In the next 10 years, how will uh, finance change? 
Well, it's a, I, I love the question, Francine. I think at times I feel one year is a really long term for me. But having said that, uh, I believe that the, the future of banking here, obviously it's around business model, it's around serving clients, but it's, I think it's around uh, uh, other dimensions that maybe we don't speak enough. I think, for instance, uh, obviously the first uh, uh, dimension is uh, uh, technology, it's uh, automatization, it's uh, uh, electronification, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. I believe that technology, if it's well done, is going to provide uh, a safer world and uh, uh, the concept of low touch and high touch to serve clients more mm -hmm. efficiently is, is happening, but this is part of the future. There is another dimension which I believe is very connected with what you do here at Bloomberg. This is sustainability. Uh, uh, the, the banking industry has a real role to play in this field uh, to support uh, the, 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 the planet and the future of the planet better. Oh, oh, oh. And I think to be really even closer to our clients' values.